Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Alex King and Daniel Mangina. Today is Thursday, February the 27th, 2020. It's 4 p.m. New York time, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And I'm learning how basic things work, like my fingers and my brain and uh, you know, how YouTube works and uh, Zoom. So, you know, if, if things don't seem quite right today, you'll understand, you know. <laughs> We have very understanding listeners. I really appreciate I, them. I, I think we need a, a cheeky rampage to get started and get you back in the groove. Walk. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. All right. <laughs> you first. I'm so grateful that Walt is not dead. <laughs> Damn it. That was mine. <laughs> well, I guess it's nice to be appreciated. <laughs> I'll quote not you what. What I quoted before the show, like Mark Twain said, rumors of my demise are greatly exaggerated. And I'm just <laughs> leaving it at that. Good, good. So I was just, I, I was, I was wrapped up in the programming project and I lost track of time. And uh, Alex, uh, you know, immediately went into, you know, disaster Panic mode. mode. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, that's all right. Things well, are good. good. That somebody did because we had, the, otherwise we would have just sat here. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. I've got the go button. We were well, having a good conversation. We just we don't have the buttons to make it go live. That's yeah, true. Yeah, we don't have the buttons. Yeah, you gotta yeah. have the buttons. But it was recording, so you could have just posted our impromptu conversation. That's true. true. Assuming I was still alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a glitch in the plan. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Well, it would then be the memorandum of LOA today. Mm. I will let you know. Mm hmm. Yep. But again, still, someone has to press the buttons to, uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm driving to Connecticut press. to figure out some buttons. At <laughs> yeah, first, you have to pass the wheeze. The <laughs> oh, that's not an issue. <laughs> yeah, you're good at pressing buttons. It's getting in the door that's the harder part, but uh, <laughs> pushing buttons has never been an issue for you, I don't yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> So anyway, we are uh, concluding our conversation that uh, Daniel and I have had over the last three weeks about his book, Stepping Beyond Intention. And uh, yes. I don't know what your intention is, Daniel. My intention is let's see if we can wrap up the book. See if we because we've we've covered like you know a good portion of it. Don't you? I mean we we did your main stuff last week. This I, the last three or four chapters were pretty much tying it all together, aren't they? Yeah, tying it all together, showing how it relates uh, specifically. To, well, I've, I, I gave guidelines and stuff, uh, specific creation points throughout the book, but starting to weave it together and give people the coherent thing that they can start to use to cycle through the steps mm, right? and show how it crosses over with other modalities and so on and so forth. So, so give us uh, some samples. So, I mean, the, the four-step process is something, it's understanding that the four-step process is ongoing until it's happening automatically so you don't have to consciously do it. So mm. when it feels uncomfortable to be out of the present moment, when it feels uncomfortable to, to be in a situation and feel yourself wanting to blame another person, place or thing, when it starts to feel natural for you to connect to consciously feel yourself wanting to connect to the end result as a present possibility versus a may or may not be when you start to hear your internal language changing that's when you're starting to really start stepping beyond intention and being beyond intention and that's when we move on to alchemic life creation which is the next step of the work but it's starting to understand guides uh guide points signposts uh signs that you're no longer consciously having to keep running through these steps Signs seems to be like a big thing for, for most people who write a book like that. And clearly they're a big thing for you. Why is that? What is, what's so important about a sign? I would say I'm actually doing my best to move away from the need for signs because it's almost signs are there to substitute for having sufficient faith to know that it's already done. Mm. Yeah, it's true. It's basically a sort of a mental crutch, really. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah. And, and that's great. Crutches are great. And I think it's one of the examples I've been used in the book. You know, having a crutch to support you on your way somewhere is very different to having a crutch that you're using for life. 
Mm -hmm. I'm staying in my wheelchair versus <laughs> I'm using this walking stick whilst I strengthen up my back and legs to get walking again. It's two different, two different situations. Mm. And signs can be, depending on the way you direct your intention and attention, they can be a temporary crutch to support you on that transition beyond the need for them. Or it can be that thing that you, you become a slave to instead of something else. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we find the energy of slavery gets translated into something that had the potential to be empowering. You know, beyond attention can be another slave for you. It's another thing that you're a slave to. Uh, just like meditation would be a thing that you're a slave to, another religion that holds you captive and standing outside of your power. And um, so avoiding the dungeon that I found myself nearly going on. <laughs> I, was, uh, I felt it. I felt it coming. I, really felt it coming. I saw that. Because I, I think about, because I do said I speak in, in structure, like there's a, a real conscious mental structure and I can see the steps and I saw the steps going over there. I was like, no, <laughs> come back, <laughs> come back. <laughs> back here. And so I would say that for many people in my experience, in my work, working with people for the, you know, for, for over the years and even in my own growth, signs are the thing that we look to when we don't have sufficient confidence in ourselves. True. Yep. I think that's probably what, it, what it's all about with a sign. Now, there's something else that you touch on. Um, I, I think it's in the chapter, the receiving mode, holding yes. the frequency. Mm -hmm. Celebration and why we do it. Yes. That's a big deal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very, very big deal. Across a couple of different um, areas. Number one, celebration. So when I started talking about, and we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, the model that I had before Beyond Intention, which was vision, purpose, faith, gratitude, and rejigging that to become Beyond Intention and getting beyond the challenges that brought me into Beyond Intention. And one of the things that people always ask, and I remember this from the very first workshop I did back in 2018, it was, how can I be grateful before it's happened? Mm -hmm. And we spoke about that in the gratitude piece. I'm not going to flog that horse, alive or dead as it may be. Um, <laughs> but... Gratitude is what we do before and thankful and celebration is what we do afterwards. Ooh, so, does it mean, so does it mean that when someone does something for me, I don't say anything because I was really grateful before. Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, I, I, I gave you thanks earlier. You, you may not have heard it, but it's in the field. No. <laughs> so been there, done that doesn't cover, cut the... Yeah, the, 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 yeah. yeah okay. So at that point, I'm thankful to the people, places and things that brought my manifestation to me the vehicles for my manifestation coming to me and i celebrate that it's arrived but i look at gratitude as the state or the frequency that we step into to the thing as a possibility here in the now before it's even manifested in my physical reality mm -hmm. so gratitude comes before and thankful and celebration after and celebration is about anchoring in that new baseline anchoring in that frequency by mm -hmm. starting to create connections in the mind and in the body between creation and feeling good. So it builds a new baseline that says this new way of doing things feels good. So let's do more of that. So it's a way of shifting the program and having your mind and body and your, your soul or spirit, if you will, work it in unison towards the positive payoff that we start to give them a taste of with celebration so that the cravings, the addiction starts to be to that positive uplift of celebration versus being down in the dumps, complaining, stress, and so on and so forth. And you gave a couple of examples in the book to kind of illustrate what the celebration process is all about. One was uh, somebody celebrating uh, going to her favorite coffee shop and getting a decadent cake, and the other one was a uh, driving experience for, for a race car driver driving a Formula One race car. Two quite different kinds of celebration yeah, and going both on. And both of them real examples from people that I've worked with over the years. Yeah. So, I like the, both the of those examples. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing, like, here's the thing uh, that I've found is that people, before taking the time to actually think about it for themselves, make celebration about what the world says they should be doing to celebrate. Oh, I'm celebrating. That means I'm supposed to have a party. I'm supposed to go and get drunk. I'm supposed to drink champagne. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to buy something expensive. When oftentimes celebration for you can be something as simple as having some time for yourself and having a decadent cake and people watching in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. or um, just having a warm bath, a hot bath with your favorite oils and your favorite music and just having that time for yourself and just feeling good. Celebration, right. I define as doing an, an, doing an activity that makes you feel really good, 
genuinely feel really good whilst holding a clear cognitive connection to the action that you just achieved, to the thing you just achieved. So you're creating a connection. So it, there's no specific way to celebrate. Everybody's going to have their own things that make them feel good. But whilst you're doing it, you're honouring and connecting specifically to what you've just manifested or what you've just done. That, that's a really good um, phrase you used to, supposed to. Because you talked earlier about signs. There's a sign right there. The moment that you're saying supposed to, that's a sign that, wait a minute, your vibration level needs some work. You're not there. You got to get that celebration up. Yeah. So yeah, supposed to. And that, I felt that one. I've, I've had that one. Well, yeah, okay. I'm supposed to be doing something now. What's am I supposed to be doing? Much too intellectual at that point. Much too intellectual. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, and then you told a couple more stories, shared a couple more, um, vignette type things about uh, clients and you uh, kind of reiterated the, 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 the four steps, but you did it from the perspective. Well, not from the perspective, but kind of tied into a book, psycho cybernetics, Maxwell Maltz. How, how was that connected? That I wasn't quite clear on that. How does that tie together? So Maxwell Maltz, um, his book, psycho cybernetics was one of the books that I, you know, one of my early reading experiences in terms of my journey into this type of information. Mm -hmm. It was about 18 years ago I read that book and uh, it had a profound effect on me. I've read it a few times now. And it was the way that he, the particular piece, of, I mean, I think it was Mark Cuban that says, read a book all the time and just take, aim to take one thing from it that's going to live mm -hmm. on, right? And, and the one, so when I read a book, I look for one thing and the one thing I got from, from that that really has never left me is the whole idea of the guided missile and how the guided missile works. Mm. Because we assume that a guided missile, you're programming the destination and then the missile is going to that destination and the guidance system is taking it to that destination. When actually mm. what the guidance missile does is it course corrects it because it will always go off course. Oh. So the guidance missile is constantly veering off course and the mm -hmm. guidance missile actually, what it, the guidance system is doing is putting it back on course. And beyond intention, effectively, is that guidance system that brings you back on course. The subconscious mind moves at 10,000 to 10 million times the speed of the conscious mind. The likelihood that from a, con a level of consciousness, out, out of consciousness, you're going to be able to maintain hold on that staying on course is very low. Not to say impossible, but very low, because the subconscious mind just moves too quickly. So until those programs have been changed, it's about taking the time to course correct so that you get to that destination of being beyond intention. That's good. And, um, in fact, the analogy of the missile is very similar to analogies I've heard about flying an airplane, because literally when a pilot flies an airplane, he's constantly course correcting. It's never <laughs> nice. He, do he doesn't have like a uh, highway well, lanes. Well, that doesn't you know? make me feel safe. <laughs> but he doesn't have highway lanes with like, you know, little divided highway and, and the dotted That's line, true. all that. So he's constantly having to gauge where am I compared to what's on the ground? Oh, you know? no. Yeah. I'm never traveling again. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know we're, all, I'm already scared that there's nothing underneath us, but now we're course correcting and we're missiles now. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm good. I'm going to stay home. <laughs> so I guess uh, we need to do a, a refresher then for Alex, Daniel, because clearly the message of the book has not really resonated with her <laughs> just yet. <laughs> It has resonated, but as it, as as the echo of her old way it persists, she's having some time to do her own course correction. Ah, uh -huh. okay, okay. Is is that accurate, Alex? I feel like it is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we don't want to speak <laughs> for you, you know. You no, no, no. <laughs> and if you claim it, it's real. Yep. Actual factuals. Mm -hmm. Actual factuals. Okay. Well, then, uh, and the last thing you talk about in the book is you uh, tie in. Uh, to another book you wrote, The Dreamer's Manifesto, about dreaming with your eyes open. Talk about that. Mm. So that's a that's like a triple or quadruple entendre there, because dream with your eyes open is the final step of the journey of my work, as it has been so far, and it's in terms of I've been teaching it, and it's what I've started speaking about recently, which is lucid living. I don't speak about this in SBI, so this is an exclusive to uh, mm. Ooh, to today. So dream with your eyes open has got a couple of meanings to it. First and foremost, it's dream big, but do something. So dream and take action. 
Mm -hmm. And as Dream, The Dreamer's Manifesto, that book is an introdu introduction to that. It's more like a feel good, go and get it kind of book. Very short book that you can get into, get through quite quickly. That's what that is at an entry level. Mm. But then you've got beyond that, the idea that lucid dreaming is what we do when we're asleep and lucid living is what we do when we're dreaming with our eyes open. So it's about lucid living, so living lucidly, seeing your reality, your waking reality, the same way that you see a lucid dream. And that's when I do my coaching weekends, that's what I'm teaching at the moment. That's the level that I'm teaching on my coaching weekends. Um, I, the, the free class I did in my group last week was an introduction to showing the evolution from beyond intention through to lucid living. So beyond intention is the tool that we do use to break free from the matrix and step into living lucidly, seeing reality for what it truly is. But that requires making a choice. And so at an entry level to my work, we're choosing our intentions. Once we get beyond the need to keep choosing intentions because our autopilot's working more for us and we're choosing our emotional state with our chemical life creation because reality wraps around how you feel. And then we choose our agreements and the agreements that we choose are what frame the dream that we live with our eyes open. Mm, okay. All right. And then um, tie in uh, some of the uh, case studies you, you listed after your closing remarks, you, you listed some case studies and testimonials to illustrate what you were teaching in the book, Stepping Beyond Intentions. So talk a little bit about those. So, yeah, I'm really, really grateful. First of all, most everyone that took the time out to, to send me a testimonial. Um, I, I reached out to, um, to some people I've worked with, people I've worked with on a personal basis, come to retreats with me and, and workshops. And I had a really good cross section of different areas that people were working in. Some people relationships, some with health, uh, with abundance, career, some just general finding their purpose and stuff. And it was really great to see that there were people in so many different areas of life that were able to apply beyond intention and make those choices that align them to the outcome. Mm -hmm. They were ready to put the work in and understand that it's not clicking your heels and popping back to Kansas. You, you may have to put some shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> you may have to kill a wicked witch. <laughs> Or you may just have to open your eyes and realize that you're in Kansas the whole time, you know, mm -hmm. but there is something that you're going mm -hmm. to have to do. Uh, and I, I've spoken about this before on a Facebook live, the whole idea that it's all very well and good that you're holding an intention. It's all very well and good that you're meditating on an intention and seeing it in the quantum field. It's all very well and good that you're mentally rehearsing it. But if you want to experience it physically, then you need to call it in physically by aligning with it physically. You know, I can close my eyes now. I'm, I'm a millionaire. I've just done it. I'm seeing it. I'm spending my minutes. I'm on my boat. Hey, boo, how are you doing? I just did it. <laughs> and that's great. And that's great. However, if we want to experience that on a different level of the matrix here in our physical reality, then I may have to start showing up in my life and making the choices that align with that outcome mm -hmm. versus just, hey, boo, how are you doing? Right. And so th there was a couple of things. It was number one, I can tell people my story and I didn't tell as much of my story as I will in other books in Stepping Beyond Intention. Mm -hmm. I wanted it more to be about the stories of the people who've used the work because it's easy to say, oh, it's right for you. You did it. You, you've done this and you've done that and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. But there are people in that book that some of those examples are people I had one call with and spent 20 minutes with them on the phone. And mm -hmm. that 20 minutes was enough for them to make the choice that completely turned their life around. Mm-hmm. Nice. Some people I worked with for months, right? And there, I, I don't remember if I did, but I wanted to actually put an example of someone that I worked with that didn't get a result and mm -hmm. that we ended up parting ways after six months mm -hmm. because I can't save you, right? Mm. It's about you being ready to save yourself. And that particular person wasn't quite ready to let go of their stories. Mm -hmm. And as a result, didn't really have the change. So, you know, and there was a level of, inviting people to see the humanity of that in terms of there's no such thing as perfect really at this level of consciousness you know this level of consciousness has contrast that's one of the collective agreements that we've all subscribed to is it possible to transcend that yes but i can't do it for you, you can only do it for yourself and so mm -hmm. it was giving people the opportunity to see that the different things that are possible not just doing my work but just bloody working on a way that serves you my other half, Olga, she doesn't really jive with my work. It's not 
it's not airy fairy enough for her. She likes a bit more. La, la, la. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm too like bricks and mortar for her. And that's great, but she does her work and she gets her results doing her work. There's some crossover. Sometimes like she, she uses beyond intention tools to a certain level, but you know, she's more deeply into, she does a lot of Dr. Joe work. She loves Dr. Joe's work. Um, Paul Selig is another guy that we, whose work we follow. She loves his stuff and she's she really game for it. And that resonates with her more, you know, and a big call for me. And it's one of the things I love about my teacher, Dr. Joe Dispenza, is that not saying you have to do my work, but you have to do the work that works for you. Because mm. mm. truth just is, and that truth will be spoken in many different languages. And it's about finding the language that resonates with you to the point where you're ready to make the choice to show up in alignment with who you want to be. And that's what that section was really all about. Okay, that's good. So a good book you put together and uh, has gotten Thank quite a bit of mileage for you, which is really good. Um, yeah, yeah, I, want to, I, I want to pick up on a couple of the concepts that we were sure. just talking about now and kind of expand on them a little bit. The first one is the lucid living part. Cause I don't, I don't think I've ever heard <laughs> that phrase before. And, Never. and lucid, lucid living is really what it's all about. So mm-hmm, let's, yeah. let's go into that a little bit. And then the other thing that you touched on, I can't remember how you described it, but well, I'll get to that in a minute. Let's do the lucid living part first and I'll see if I can mm-hmm. remember how you describe the other one so I can be lucid about that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, I'm, I'm very, I, 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 I allow myself to be very guided in the way that my work involves. And, and recognizing that although I describe it quaintly as my work, it's not my work, it's just truth that I, over time, allow the work that I do on myself to mix into a cacophony of concepts and ideas that other people might learn from too. Mm-hmm. So it's not my truth, it's just truth. You know, I was actually speaking to Olga about, you know, a guy who was a friend of mine who got upset with me because um, in my dreamer journals, I've got a journal I, I designed that supports the work with Beyond Attention there's a a gratitude and intention section and he's got a book that he wrote that speaks about gratitude and intention. And he said, I sold his idea. (laughs) I I don't know how you can steal that, but okay. (laughs) I I laughed about because the fourth step of beyond intention, which, you know, I was doing eight years before I even knew who he was is gratitude. Mm -hmm. And my model is called beyond intention, but um, Mm -hmm. he was, he was quite upset by that. And, um, I find it funny, like I said, but it's I like agree. the idea that um, any of us own any of this, I find to be hilarious, you know, yes. as Dan Jantastic as there is, um, <laughs> it speaks to the fact that lucid living, I've heard someone else, other people use the phrase lucid living in a very different context, but for me, lucid living is playing at the edge of consciousness. And what I mean by that is recognizing that we are constantly at the edge of our reality unfolding consciously. Some of us do it walking backwards, looking at the stories of the past. Some of it do it looking to the sides of what other people are doing. Some do it with our eyes closed, allowing our subconscious programs to keep unfolding who we are, which then unfolds then the next steps as they evolve. Because our reality going forward does not exist yet until we call it in, because the energy that makes up reality responds to who we are in the now and then unfolds in the nows to come. Now, when we understand that at its true level, we are constantly in a perfect place to create from the infinite possibilities available to us in the universe. Mm -hmm. But there are things that stand in the way of that. And the journey of beyond intention from beyond intention itself through to this position is about breaking free from the the macro-esque stories that hold us back from that. The first being that we don't have a choice which is what Beyond Intention is really saying. We don't have a choice and we don't have responsibility. It's other people to blame. God, the devil, mum, dad, Donald Trump. <laughs> In that order. In that order, <laughs> Letting go of those, those BS stories and accepting, you know, I am the author and creator of my life. And it's, and it's, you know, ultimate level. Accept, I'm the author and creator of my life. I accept everything here and now at this edge. At the edge, I accept everything that's happened till now, and I accept that it's done, and there's nothing to be done about it, and I accept that it has no power here at the edge that I don't give it by calling my attention to it. Next, love as a frequency will transcend anything from that anyway, and if I remain present, I have the power to unfold anything I desire going forward. And then gratitude, I can connect here and now to the frequency that resonates or relates to what I want to experience on this next step. I can do it. 
And then listening is just taking that step with awareness and maintaining the frequency that relates to what I want to experience. And then I can effortlessly start flowing through life where what I desire is unfolding for me step by step by step by step by step. Yeah. So that's beyond intention into alchemic life creation and alchemic life creation and training people on how to a tap into more of themselves. So what they are creating is what they truly desire at a core level versus what other people have told them. And then be understanding that our frequency is nothing more than our emotional state and our emotional state is something that we can choose. And as we choose that and hold that frequency, we don't need to keep setting intentions. We can choose our, our, our frequency, our emotional state and through that unfold our world. And once we do that and we understand that, we can start to step beyond it and start recognizing, okay, now that I've let go of the stories, I'm here at the edge. What agreements do I choose to frame the infinite possibilities into a set of possibilities that I can play with through my emotional state? And that's what we do with lucid living. We treat life as a lucid dream that we consciously direct moment by moment through our emotional state here in the now. Yeah. Yeah. And that was actually a big breakthrough moment for me. First of all, recognizing that, my God, I really can control my emotional state. I, I literally went through, oh, God, the first 40 years of my life thinking that I couldn't. Mm. Seriously, you know, and, mm. and, and then to do an experiment and fail and do another experiment and fail and then do one after like four or five failures and it succeed. Mm -hmm. and let, let me tell you, success was measured in a really, really small measuring stick. I mean, we're talking millimeters, but I got it to shift consciously. And I said, wow, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> I thought my emotions were completely dependent upon my external environment. Uh, so that breakthrough moment for me was, was big. Now, that may not be you know, as impactful for other people as it was for me. But for me, that was a big one. That was really but you know, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't you, matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. that's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether you win by an inch or a mile, it doesn't matter. Really and it true. doesn't matter. And their stories don't matter. What matters is your story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the stories and the groups. At every point in our life, we're unfolding our reality based on choices. And we can step into deeper dominion over our reality based on the type of choice that we're making. And the point that I've reached in my own journey and that I share with others now is that of choosing our stories and our agreements. Mm. Time is an agreement. Death is an agreement. Colors are in agreement. Some of them serve. So why am I going to mess with them? They work for me. But it's just consciously f flicking through those agreements that show up in our lives and saying, do I choose this one? And just consciously choosing and selecting, stepping mm -hmm. into that fullness of, um, of creative responsibility. So, yeah, that's what, that, anyway, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm really working with people when they come to my weekends and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's we do like a, a crash course through the, the other two. I normally do some work with them beforehand as part of that. And, and then we spend that weekend just teaching them, giving them access to the agreements and how to change them, how to change and choose those. And for me, the, uh, I love the fact that you were mentioning story again, too, because that was really tying into what I was thinking of as, as the second topic. So I'll just call the second topic the story that we tell ourselves. Mm. Um, because to me, that's, that, this is something I've actually wanted to revisit here on the program and have tried to do on a n number of occasions with some degree of success, but I want to find mm -hmm. a way to make it a permanent feature of each show. Um, because it, it's kind of like, it, it, this kind of comes out of the conversation I had with Louis on Monday, Louis D'Souza, because Louis's big point, and it's a wonderful point, is that contrast is wonderful because contrast is where we learn exactly what it is that we don't want. Mm -hmm. and, and he's right. I mean, because that without contrast, we how would we know? <laughs> right. <laughs> it would not that's be possible story. to know. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. But we also have to go a step beyond that. It's not enough to say, I don't want that. I definitely don't want. I, I want to not have that. You know, that's mm -hmm. one thing. But then you got to say, well, what is it that you do want? Right. What is it that you like? And then you got to start vibrating to it. And that involves the storytelling. That's where the, the telling the new story comes into it. And I noticed, I noticed in myself, and I, I think it's true in, in most people, most of us don't really understand how to tell a story. 
first of all, we get blown away by the idea, well, oh my God, I have to tell a story and there's a whole science to it. And I have, you know, I'm going to leave the characters out and I'm going to screw up the plot and so forth, not realizing that we're way over complicating it. Mm-hmm. But even more than that, we, we, we know how to tell the stories that we've always told ourselves. We know how to play those old tapes. They're easy. Creating the new ones, that's where people blank out. So mm-hmm. I want to find some way of incorporating storytelling skill in the podcast on a regular basis Ooh. as a way of both illustrating to listeners how to do it and just doing it. Mm-hmm. Cause so much of what we do here, here on the podcast, I, and I'm not tearing down what we're doing here on the podcast because I've been enjoying doing it for seven and a half years, but so much of what we do is analysis of what we were doing right or what we were doing wrong. Mm-hmm. So little of it by comparison to what I would like, actually it's quite a bit compared to what other shows do, but compared to what I would like, so little of it is about actually creating the new story right here, right mm-hmm. here on the show. And I want to mm-hmm. do more of that. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about stories as a kind of a way to get that going. And, and I, I don't have a clear format in mind. I don't have any clear sense of how I want to get this going, but I want this to be a regular thing somehow where we're telling the new stories in our lives, where we're helping listeners tell new stories in their lives, where we're just, you know, showing how you invent a story, how you create a story out of thin air. That is your new story. Mm. Aren't you demonstrating it right now? I kind of am, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, are we doing it right, right now? <laughs> we really are, yes. Right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome to now, and in this now, we are going to create stories starring now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I mean, for, for, for me, one of the things that I say at the lucid level, lucid dreaming, lucid dreaming, lucid living level is that everything is a story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything's a story. It's just some serve a conscious intention and some serve an unconscious intention, but everything is a story that's serving an intention. Mm-hmm. Absolutely everything. Your relationship to yourself, the relationship that we're having here, my relationship to this computer, my relationship to this pen, everything is a story. And those stories are comprised of agreements. And those agreements are the narrative that the the blueprint of the universe, the blueprint of our that going out to the universe is playing on the back of. So the context is everything. And for me, The story aspect isn't even that complicated. It's how do I want this to play out? Whether consciously or unconsciously, how do I I want this to play out? There is only one character, I say, and that is us. And that character plays out in different forms and comes back to us reflected in different different ways. But there is only one central character. And that one central character is bobbing along, engaging with different aspects of itself at different levels of consciousness. And the stories are, what is that bobbing along going to be? And that bobbing along is always going to happen. Otherwise, you're dead. Right. <laughs> if you're alive, True. you're bobbing along. And as you bob along, what are you going to bob along, in, bob, along in, bob along into? None of it is by chance and none of it is without, without mm-hmm. intention, whether it's conscious or unconscious. Mm-hmm. But that intention is reflected back based on who we are in the now. So for me, mm-hmm. one of the most powerful things that I teach people on the weekend, and I normally say for the very end, is that all of this is great, but none of it lasts beyond the now. Right. Mm. No story lasts beyond the now. Every new now, a new story has the opportunity to be concocted. And if not given, then the past will just play itself out again. Over mm-hmm. and over and over and over. The subconscious law of momentum, everything continues until it's disrupted and that disruption can only happen through choice Mm -hmm. that's true it's very true Mm -hmm. alex you're saying a lot of "Mm -hmm." this is resonating yes definitely (laughs) (laughs) i'm love i mean you i mean well you'll see the hashtags in a a few minutes but yeah (laughs) (laughs) i like can't keep up i'm like oh my gosh (laughs) (laughs) So give us a clue. What's, what, what is it that you're feeling? What is it that you're thinking when you're hearing about this? Cause, cause this is a big deal topic to me. And so I want to know what other people are thinking about. It. That's why I'm asking you. I just like how he like catches everything with, with like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like everything's kitschy. So like lucid living <laughs> and doing the work that works for you and the story that we tell ourselves and everything is a story. And what was the other one? Dream with your eyes open. Like everything like, 
it's like boom. And then, then it makes you want to listen in. So it's everything is very hashtagable right now. Okay. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> I'm That's I'm good. I'm honored. I'm honored that, that which channels through me speaks to the hashtag. <laughs> There it is. You're making my job super easy. <laughs> but you know, well, this is the thing. One, this is—I I was speaking to one of my. Well, she's continued with me, but we, we've done the work now. She just kind of just checks in now. We, we've got a, a mm-hmm. thing where she just checks in, and she rounded off six months of work with me by coming to my weekend in January, and um, and she she just gets it. She's just she's one of my favorite people I've, I've ever had the chance to work with, and I just love her dearly. And, and we're speaking about this and the, of the idea that we don't actually need anything more. We don't actually need, we need to do less, less thinking, less analyzing, less stuff. And for a moment, just come back to center and listen into what feels good. Facts. And then allow that to be the, the voice the still small voice of the soul guiding us on what the story could be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because oftentimes I found that the stories that we want to rewrite were never our stories in the first place. It's what Trump, <laughs> the GOP, the Democratic <laughs> Party, Bernie Sanders, uh, your local governor, your teacher, your boss, your mum, your husband or your wife, your kids, your dog. You're like a politician, the news. That's what all they said, what Twitter said, what Mark mm-hmm. Zuckerberg said. Those stories are what we're making our story. Mm. And then tells us that we need to write a new story versus just stopping for a moment, choosing to come back to the now, knowing that we have the power to do so. And this is where the beyond attention comes in, accepting that I do have the power to do this and I've got responsibility to do it if I want to be the author and creator of my life consciously because i am unconsciously anyway and then in that space of now let's just ask what the hell feels good right now yeah and then and if we and just voicing it it's not it's not, that, it's not just it's just just asking it it's answering it it's getting the answer and i think verbalizing it or at least in some way expressing it because if the answer comes to you and you don't actually take it in it didn't do anything for you <laughs> which is why you know from that silence we step into the embodiment of that voice with gratitude connected yeah. to it as an outcome and then just chewing in to see whether it's that's the voice we're still tuning into and then witnessing and celebrating as it unfolds it's a much easier way to do life but also a much more difficult and challenging way to step into doing life at the mm-hmm. same time. yeah that's true yeah it is i think about people who i know and including myself who practice who keep, keep trying to get better at being a conscious creator. Certainly we're all creating consciously or unconsciously, like you said, right. um, but try to learn how to do it more consciously and also try to feed the unconscious, you know, the subconscious, because both need feeding. Um, and we try to do it pretty regularly. And then we go out in life and I swear to God, it's as if we forgot everything that we learned. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I think that's merely because we just haven't practiced it enough. We just, we haven't established a new pattern yet. So the old patterns are holding pretty strong. Um, and it, it's interesting to me how many different ways I see it happen. I see it happen with my co-hosts. I see it happen with my friends. I see it happen with people I don't really know very well, but I've seen on social media, commenting on stuff. Mm. And I've seen it just in, you know, people that you see on television. I've, you know, you see it all over the place. I, what I see is people who are in so many ways, they get it. They, they get being a conscious creator. And then something happens that presses an emotional button in some way. And it's as if the brain turns off and they forgot all of what they learned. And now all of a sudden they're right back to being, I'll use the word addicted to that external event that was controlling them just like they were before. Mm -hmm. And I've done it too. I mean, I've, I was experiencing it just the other day with a TV series that I really despise, but my wife was playing it. And so I sat down and watched it with her. And it was one of these series that, oh, I mean, one terrible, chaotic, horrible thing after another was happening. <laughs> what show was it? I wouldn't know what show it was. <laughs> it was Madam the Secretary. <laughs> and I was sitting there saying, why am I sitting here? 
<laughs> Why am I sitting here? I know better. And fortunately, at one point, my wife muted it or something to say to say something to me. And I said, thank you so much. You just broke the hypnotic spell. <laughs> <laughs> the hypnotic spell. That's how shows get me all the time. It, but it just really illustrates as much progress as we make, there's lots of room for improvement. Right. You know? mm-hmm. and, and to me, it, that all comes back to what you were just talking about, Daniel, about you know, going back to that centered now place and recognizing that it's just about choosing what is it that I like right now. Because at that moment in time, I was forgetting to pay attention to what is it that I like. And actually, there was a piece of me on a semi-conscious level that was saying, Walt, you don't want to be doing this. You want to find what you like. But it wasn't getting anywhere. Mm-hmm. It wasn't getting anywhere. Leverage. Yeah. Leverage, Mr. That's yeah. what it comes down to. And I think the sooner that people understand and know that nothing is by accident, nothing is by chance that you're doing nothing that was forgotten. The mm-hmm. subconscious mind never turns off. You didn't forget. You just did what you're doing 95% of the time, which is running on your unconscious program. And that pattern showed up as exactly. you're watching that show. Yeah, I didn't forget at all. I I was in some way blocking myself from the knowledge, of, but the knowledge was still there. I could tell it was there. The subconscious mind doesn't lose, and this is what the sooner that people understand this. I mean, people think that the conscious mind isn't what does the creation. The subconscious mind does the creating. It does. It gets the instruction and does the building. Right? Mm-hmm. They are the robots. They are the it's, ones it's on the factory computer. floor doing the stuff. Yeah, they're doing everything. Yeah. Consciously, we can choose the blueprint. But unless that blueprint's been communicated in a way that the subconscious mind understands, it's going to keep making the same thing. And this is an example I use. Did I use? I think I used this, a variation of this in the book, but I definitely talk about in, in workshops and I'm doing the building intention of workshops that it's like having a factory and you're in the director's room. But you accidentally gave the directions to the floor and they're making one thing. And then you come down to the factory floor and say, oh, why are you making these things? And the words yeah. are like, what you told us to make. Yeah, right. And then you start screaming in Japanese to Spanish speaking <laughs> workers for them to make something different and then get frustrated. And then we turn around and say, oh, I knew they didn't listen. Everything goes terrible. And then go back into the, the, the office, look and just spend the rest of your life complaining about the fact that Spanish speaking people didn't understand your Japanese <laughs> instructions about the Italian silk that you wanted made into that particular thing whereas if we just take a moment to stop (laughs) except that we're speaking the wrong language Mm. learn the right language and speak to them they'll make the right clothes because they they follow instruction to the t Mm. it never turns off the factory never turns off it's always churning out outcomes always churning out experiences that's what we're witnessing as our world but for us to have a, a world that reflects what we consciously choose we have to speak to that subconscious mind to speak to those workers in the language that they actually understand. You did not forget anything. Nothing was forgotten. That's just the blueprint that the mind was working off. That from time to time, you're going to sit and watch something that you don't like. And if you listen to your internal state at the time, that was reflected to the outcome mm-hmm. that at a deep level, you've, you've unconsciously chosen and desire to have in your experience. Yeah, I th- well, I think also it's, uh, I, I agree with everything you said, but I think there's another factor going on here. There's also the factor that when we have a, a tape recording, we'll call it that, that subconscious program playing and has been playing for so long, it like anything else where, uh, living and source energy and, and vibration and intention are involved, the more something goes on, the bigger it gets. It gains more and more vibrational power. Mm-hmm. And so if you have a tape that's been playing for a long, long period of time, you can be shouting above, you know, the, the, the fray as much as you want to. And it's still going to take a while to slow down because it's got so much momentum built up. And that's the story because yeah. there's nothing that exists beyond the now. So, but yeah. if that's the story that you're running on, then that's the way it's going to work. Because change doesn't take time. Change takes an instant. What takes time is us ready to let go of the stories that dictate the time that it must take. Mm. Because yeah, time true. doesn't exist beyond... Time doesn't exist beyond this now. Mm-hmm. So there's there's nothing beyond your story that says that there has to be some protracted time that it takes. Now, we have the law of gestation, but the law of gestation is still a story. Universal laws are just collective agreements that enough people believe in to give them strength. 
Mm. And even me saying that is a story too, because, and this is the, this is the existential crisis that can appear when you truly stand at the edge of consciousness. Nothing is real. Nothing lasts beyond the now, unless your beliefs give it the power that give it, give it life and give it meaning. It's like a, um, a Goyim, I think it's they, not Goyim. Uh, I can't remember the name of the, 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 the little dolls that are given life. I think it's in Hebrew folklore that these spirits are given life by belief and then become things that affect your world. Our world is, is made up of these things that are given meaning by our belief in it. The life that are we talking give, about a golem? Is it a golem? I, uh, I'm assuming so. I don't remember the word. It starts with a G, but people know what, what we're talking about. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm glad but somebody does. Every, <laughs> everything is given life. Everything is energy, pure potential energy, that's given life by our beliefs and our choices. Or should I say our choices against the backdrop of our beliefs. And so if we have a belief that, yeah, I've given it, you know, I've been doing it this long, therefore it, it needs to take longer. Okay. That's what you're going to experience. And that's true for you. So it's not wrong. It's true for you because you've given that life, but even the life that you give it can be taken away by redirecting that attention to a new story, a new agreement. But generally speaking, most of us are running on the agreement, the collective agreements that the mind does take time to change because we, most of us are locked in the illusion of time. Mm -hmm. But we can step out of that. That's what timeline jumping is all about that you guys do on a Friday, right? It's about jumping out of the timeline that support, that's supported by that story and into a new one that has freedom from it. And that's living at the edge of consciousness. But it will demand that you let go of the stories that are holding you in a different timeline to jump into the new one. Interestingly enough, very often people will jump out of a timeline and they'll jump right into another timeline that has the same addictive quality as the previous one. Because they're the same person showing up the same way, just in a different, different environment. So in other words, just another way of telling a story that they decide not to change. Look, this is the thing. You've got the timelines and you've got the frequency that you're operating on in that timeline. We've got infinite number of timelines. So there's an infinite number of timelines that exist with you as the same version of you, just in a different environment, playing the same stories against a different backdrop. So making the change inward first, change from the outs from the inside out versus the outside in. Mm-hmm. So many people, they're in a situation and they're like, I just need a new job. I need a new relationship. I need more money and everything's going to change versus understanding that if they put that same energy interchange it from the inside out they the world would then reflect and match what they've chosen to be from the inside and that change that they're craving from outside st- stimulus would happen and actually be real versus six months later they're the same as your last relationship or mm. three months later the money you won the lottery is gone or people that have re- repeatedly i know people that have killed themselves with the craziest diseases and then get something else mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. well, the same thing comes back because as we're reality is moving against a new blank slate that's shining at every moment, we have the opportunity to bring the past back to the now every time. Mm-hmm. And unless we do the work of changing the blueprint that creation is happening against for us, that's what we're going to keep creating. And it it's a pattern that affects everybody. I've never seen anybody who it doesn't affect. Mm-hmm. That's this level of consciousness. Just one second. Okay. <laughs> By the way, uh, Alex, uh, Jeffrey in our live stream was confirming it. He says, he also says it's Gollum. So. Ah, just... see, my supernatural. But I thought Gollum was from Lord of the Rings. No, that's. Well, that's all. That's well, it is. In Gollum. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But um, a Gollum is as. Um, you saw this supernatural episode. Where yeah, the, that's um, where I got it from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a golem. Yeah, that's where I got no, it. No, in fact, no, I didn't see it from. I didn't see it from Supernatural. I saw it from Sleepy Hollow. Oh, okay. Oh, but I did see show. it from Supernatural. Also, I just remembered Supernatural because they, the boy, didn't the kid make the golem accidentally? In Supernatural. Well, no, he got it. It was a gift from his grandfather. And he, he accidentally didn't, gave it life. He well, he didn't know how to control it until he had to speak the the words in Hebrew or something like that. Yeah. Well, and anyway. the Nazis were, yeah, it's a long story. Anyway, 
And, and Jeffrey's pointing out there are actually two different story, uh, two different spellings, so uh, or at least two different spellings. Uh, G O L E M and G O L L U M. Jeffrey, which one's which? <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeffrey, the, no. I think the second one is Lord of the Rings, but I'm not 100 percent certain of that. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Our world is a series of golems basically being given life by our beliefs, given life by our stories that support it. And those play out, but those don't have to play out beyond the now. And this is the message of hope. I want everybody listening to this show to walk away from. Nothing in your life right now needs to exist beyond the now. And if you turn your attention inwards, connecting to the frequency that resonates with what you do want going forward, it will happen without you needing to do anything. It sounds so simple when you say it that way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it is simple. It, the complication comes in when we add our stories, when we add our excuses, when we add our own narratives, our own belief systems. All of those adding on top are what create the complexity. God did not make things difficult. Man did so he could say it was impossible. Mm. And to make matters even more confusing, we are God. So we're the ones who did this to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Dog guard, I can't get away with anything anymore. <laughs> and the thing is, and I was having this conversation with a friend of mine yesterday because she was talking about she was talking about a situation that she was going through. And I was like, Yeah, but here's the thing, dude. When you step into this level of creative responsibility for your world, there's it's more to stay on top of. <laughs> <laughs> there's what you signed up for. Yeah. You you want to live a kick ass, you know, kick butt life on, on command? Cool, then you you know then you have to create all of it. It's like, mm-hmm. I want full dominion over everything except my finances or except my health or except my relationships. The rest of it, I'm going to leave to the stories. No, we're either all in or we're all out. It's one of the two. Yeah. You're either creating or you're not. Pretty black and white, really, when you look at it that way. There's, I mean, there's no gray area in there. There isn't. No. Unless we create the story of being the gray area, but then the ah. creation is still happening just at a subconscious level. And there's the rub. That's all things contrast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Contrast is a contrast. It's just a collective agreement. Not everybody has to have contrast. Because to say that everyone has, has to have contrast, you've just constricted infinite possibility to there only being quantum potentials where people have contrast. Mm, that's true. Yep. Mm. Yep. Very true. So. Anyway. All right. Well, that was good. Thank you. First of all, thank you for giving us uh, this four week uh, overview of Stepping Beyond Intention. From the author's perspective, I mean, it's one thing when, you know, Cindy and I or, or one of the others that I've done these shows with do a book that somebody else wrote and the, that other person isn't here doing the show with us. So we're kind of doing the interpreting. Well, I think what uh, uh, Neville Goddard was really saying is blah, 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 as opposed <laughs> to the author saying, well, here's what I was really saying. <laughs> <laughs> You missed the first part, but you got the fourth part. So well done on that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, thanks for it's been it's been it's been great. I mean, I, I I hope that I've given people some context to add to 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 the book and um, that's not in the book, so you can add some more flavor to it and add more texture. I did want to make the book as digestible as possible, and so I did simplify a lot of things and make things really clean. But mm-hmm. being able to add some peas to the soup feels good. So it's it's kind of the natural time to ask, you know, for people who are kind of intrigued now, now that they have a better understanding of what SBI is all about. Okay, we talked about it last week, you know, what what, what the the various classes are that you have going on and your, and your group and so forth. Give people the quick overview. How do they find out more? How do they get involved in what you're teaching on a regular basis? I would Besides say listening to the a... show, I mean. I mean, listening to the show. <laughs> it's not given, but, you know. Listen to the show. I would say that... Um, Everything that's new, like I, I released a one-day class. I'm beta testing a new a new template that's happening on the 15th of March. That sold out overnight. That went to my Dream with Dan group. So I would say go to my group on Facebook, Dream with Dan. You can find, find that with dreamwithdan.com forward slash Facebook. Anything that's new gets posted there first. They get first dibs on everything. But if you want to have regular access to the programs that teach you how to apply beyond intention um, and access to all of the programs that I do – included then beyond intention university is your is your gig it starts at 47 dollars a month and you get access to all my online programs the next level up from that you also get access to the group calls i do every week the group coaching calls um the next level up from that you get the premium programs like micro to millions and all sorts of really groovy stuff so that's the most efficient effective way to dip your toe in because 
there's no commitment. You, you can go month to month and, and roll around and do what you need. Um, and I'd say that's really what you want to you want to do. If you want to move beyond just free content and and step into actually getting something with an energy exchange, it's going to bring more results into your life. Then beyond attention university is a good start. Okay. All right. Good Very start. good. Yeah, I don't really do much one to one coaching. I only now do one to one coaching really with people that are in my masterminds. And if you want to work with me in person, the way to do that is to come to one of my coaching weekends. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Um, also want to give people a little bit of a heads up because we have a friend of yours coming by as a special guest, I believe in about 12 days from now on March 10th, we're going nice. to be getting, Kim's going to be coming by uh, to tell us a little bit more about uh, what her experience has been with Dr. Joe. And I'm sure you'll be yep. able to compare some notes on that. Tell us a little bit more about yep. Kim so that people know what to expect. Kim is just amazing. I love Kim Lee. Um, my very first advanced Dr. Joe event, she actually fitted me for my, my brain scan. And, um, uh-huh. yeah, and we've just built a friendship over the last few years. Off of um, a brain scan. Wow. Yeah. She's just really, really cool. She's a team leader in Do- for Dr. Joe. She also not only does corporate training of his work in corporations, she also trains the people that do his corporate training in corporations. So, oh, wow. She's, she's just amazing. She's really, really cool. You can follow her on Instagram. She's going to give it to you. I, I don't know off head, but Kim Lee Bowder, she's really, really cool. She's fun to watch on Instagram as well. She's just really cool. Just a really, really cool person, really down to earth, big heart and knows her stuff, like really, really knows her stuff. So when you were looking at someone to talk about Dr. Joe and his work, Dr. Joe Dispenza, she came to mind first as someone who would just be great. And yeah, I'm just excited that she's coming on the show. That's going to be good. So mark it on your calendars, folks. That's Tuesday, March 10th. Kim's going to be joining us. And uh, I I have to admit, I'm looking forward to it. She actually sent me an email saying, so what's the topic? And I told her, well, the impetus behind all this was the conversation (laughs) that we had on uh, on the show where I I think I basically asked, you know, why is it that Dr. Joe's uh, clients seem to have better experience with meditation than other clients? What is what's he doing differently? That's the topic. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. So we're going to find out uh, a week from Tuesday. So good stuff. Want to remind people who are not yet subscribers, become a subscriber. I won't give you the whole spiel because most of you know it. But for those of you who aren't really sure how to do it, just go to LOAToday.net. And it's right at the top of the page. It helps you to do it. Um, check us out on YouTube. Quickly, Alex, how do they do it on YouTube? Uh, go to LOA Today podcast videos and hit subscribe and then hit the little silver bell and click all so you'll always be notified when we're live. And it's always helpful, too, whenever we're doing this, to have Dan in the background mimicking us and making all these great gestures. So but he mutes some of that himself, so if you're not on YouTube, I mean, if you are on YouTube, you can't see it. Sometimes <laughs> you can, though. Myself that it one did. time that I got caught. <laughs> that one time. <laughs> Sometimes the Zoom camera just decides it's going to focus on somebody. I've noticed that. It has this, mm-hmm. it's like it has a random number generator in it. And it, you know, it does sometimes it based on the sound. It yeah. does it based on the sound, sound capture. So that's why Except I when it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex, for your insightful comments as usual. Thank you to our live streamers and especially thank you to our podcast listeners as well. We will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye. Everybody.